If you're at the point in your LSAT prep where further prep just seems pointless and redundant, that's really great news. At that point, all you've got to do is maintain. Luckily, there are nearly 100 real official LSAT practice tests. I would say just take one practice test a week, review it in depth, and that could be enough. Now, the question, of course, is how do you get to the point where you're consistently acing your practice tests, where you're at your goal score, and you are ready for test day itself? That comes down to creating a schedule where you maximize the number of practice tests that you're taking. If you've got over six months, you could cover every single practice test ever released. Of course, six months from now, they will have removed the logic game section from the test. They'll have replaced it with a second score logical reasoning section. And if you look inside Law Hub, you'll see that practice tests for the non-games version of the test are consolidated and reduced because they cut out the games, they reorganize the things a bit. So there are only going to be, at this point, 58 numbered practice tests for the August LSAT and beyond. They may release more, they may add some more in, but you could very easily, of course, do every single prep test ever released over a six month period. If you've got only four to five months till your test, you might want to do the most recent 40, two to three months, the most recent 30, less than two months till your test, do the most recent 20. And of course, if you want to score in the top 1% of test takers, you've got to study differently than 99% of test takers. When others are using more conventional methods that frankly just don't work that well for the majority of students, I want to encourage you to adopt more unconventional methods of studying. So I don't want you to just drill practice questions. Don't copy how others solve them. Don't use explanations as a crutch. Instead, slow down, analyze the questions for yourself. Why not try writing your own explanations? I personally learned a ton when I wrote explanations for over 1,000 LSAT logical reasoning questions, it led me to better understand how they are constructed to see the exam from the test maker's point of view. You get far more out of writing your own explanations, including for all five choices, than seeing how someone else supposedly has this perfect method for solving a question that would never work under real timed conditions. You could also try transforming one LSAT logical reasoning question type into another. You take the stimulus, you separate it from the question stem and the choices, and you reframe it. So if it was initially a strengthened question, you transform it into a weakened question. If it was a flaw question, you could transform it into, for example, a necessary assumption question. I could imagine an assembly line approach where one test writer makes the stimulus, another makes the question stem, another makes the answer choices, and then they are all combined and analyzed and validated for accuracy. That may not be how they actually do it, of course, but doesn't matter. The point is that the question stem is to some extent independent from the stimulus, and the stimulus is somewhat separate from the answer choices. You could also get a lot out of taking an LSAT reading comp passage and rewriting the entire thing in simpler language as if you were going to explain it to a five-year-old. You could also, as a drill, as an exercise, take a passage and do just the main idea questions associated with that passage to make sure that you are, of course, crystal clear on what the main idea is. All of these are different elements of my Socratic review method framework that I use to help guide students from low scores to high scores to bring them from the 140s and the 150s into the 160s and the 170s. If you'd like my support in adopting this practice for yourself, you can check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd be glad to help you out. I'm looking for a couple of students to join me for an intensive one-on-one -on -one coaching program aiming to achieve a 170 plus in the next three to six months. If this describes you and you've already scored a 160 or above on at least one timed practice test, please book a call with me and my team. The link's below this video. We'd be glad to help you out and explore that possibility together. Now, for more strategies, I'd recommend, for example, you might try writing your own LSAT questions from scratch. This is especially fun to do for logic games if you're taking the LSAT in April or June. You might try this out. Of course, there are about 400 actual official LSAT logic games. You're not going to be able to do all of them between now and June. So doing Sudoku and crossword puzzles should not be a factor in your LSAT study plan. Stick with the actual official questions and try writing your own just for fun here and there to help you better see the exam from the test maker's point of view. I personally learned a ton when I wrote about 10 of my own original logic games from scratch of all different types, ordering, grouping, 
different types of ordering, different types of grouping, in and out matching. It was a lot of fun. It took about five to six hours per game, but I learned a lot in the process. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do me a favor and share it with someone who needs to see it. I don't do any advertising for these videos. I rely only on word of mouth to help get the word out. And so your spreading the word really does make a difference. And in the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.